All right, so this is how you work out the maximum flow and minimum cut in a network. Just keep in mind, I've tried this for quite a few examples and it seems to work pretty consistently for these types of examples, but I've tried it for examples where you have edges crossing over and it didn't work as effectively for those. So just keep that in mind. So we've got two different examples. I'll do the one on the left first. The first thing you want to do is look at where your source and your sink are. So it's at A and at F. And you want to find any path that connects the source to the sink. So I'm going to look at the one that goes over the top, 9, 4, and 5. Take the smallest of those numbers and we're going to write it in the top corner. And then we're going to subtract that number from each of the numbers along that path. So I'm going to <clears throat> Sorry, subtract it from the 4, subtract it from the 5, and subtract it from the 9. Okay, now you need to find any other path that connects the source to the sink that doesn't yet have a 0 in it. So I'm going to go down here, 8 and 5. So the smallest number in that path is a 5. <clears throat> and I'm going to subtract it from all of the numbers along that path. <clears throat> so I get a 3 here and a 0 there. Okay, find any other path that doesn't yet have a 0 in it. So I'm going to go 3, 3, and 6. The smallest number in that line is a 3. And I'm going to subtract that from each of the numbers along that path. So I get a 0 there, a 0 there, and a 3 there. All right. Uh, find any other path that connects the source to the sink. I've got a 5, 4, and a 3. So the smallest number in that path is a 3, and I'm going to subtract it from all the numbers in that path. 1. So I get a 2, a 1, and a 0. Um, are there any other paths that have no zeros in them. So if I go up this way, I can only come this way or this way. Note that has a zero. If I come down, well, I can't come down because it's already a zero. So once there are no paths left that don't have a zero in it, you can stop. And the maximum flow is going to be equal to the sum of all of those numbers. So four and five make nine and 12 and 15. So the maximum flow for this diagram is going to be 15 and the cut that you can make is always going to go through wherever you have the most zeros or some zeros and a backwards facing line. So I've got a zero here, here and here. So I can actually cut through those three zero lines and you'll notice that it was originally a four, a six and a five. 4 plus 6 plus 5 is 15. It matches your working out. So that is the uh, minimum cut with a maximum flow of 15 for that diagram. All right, let's try the other one. So our source is at A, our sink is at G. Let's go um, start with the one going at the top. So I've got a 2, a 3, and a 5. The smallest number is Two, and I'm going to subtract that from all of the numbers along that path. And three there. All right, what comes next? Um, how about four, six, and six? So the smallest number would be a four. And subtract it from each of those three numbers. Okay, next is maybe like five, three, and two. Smallest number is a two. Subtract it from each of those. Oh, no, sorry, that should be a three. And um, anything else? How about if we go three, two, two, four, three? That works as well. The smallest number on that line would have been a two. So I need to subtract it from here, from here, from here there and there. Can I get from the source to the sink any other way? How about down here? One, one, two, one. So that's going to be smallest number is a one. So that becomes a zero. 
that one's a zero, that one's a one, and that one is a zero. Anywhere else I can go, well, I can see starting off at A, if I go zero, zero, or zero, there's absolutely no way I can get from the source to the sink anymore, so that must be the end of it. And my maximum flow is going to be equal to six, eight, 10, 11. And I just need to see where I can make a cut with a size 11 through mostly zeros or some zeros and some backwards facing lines. I can see that here we originally had a five and a six, so a cut there would be suitable because that makes 11. Um, I can also see a lot of zeros going down this way, so another suitable cut would have been two, six, and five, so that would have been 11 as well. Um, I can see a lot of zeros coming down this way, so let's check that. Um, two, six, eight, 11, yep. And um, is there anywhere else? How about if I went down this way? So I would have gone through here, 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 and here. Keep in mind that this line here is moving from the side of the sink to the side of the source across that cut so that you wouldn't count that line in when you're adding up your totals. So it would have been a line of two, six, and three, which makes 11. So that would have been a suitable cut as well. So you can see that sometimes you will have multiple cuts with the same value and they're all suitable. So it's not always just one cut that works. Sometimes you have multiple cuts as well and they'll all be worth um, the minimum cut that you can make, which is the maximum flow for that diagram. Just make sure that when you're adding up any edges that they don't flow from the side of the sink to the side of the source. You only wanna count lines that go from the source side to the sink side. If you're unsure about that, um, a good way to kind of double check is I always like to kind of circle around and then you can do a little shading and then if it goes from the shaded side to the unshaded side then you know you don't count it. That's like kind of a little trick that sometimes helps me visualize um, the sink side and the source side. Um, and that should be it. Again um, it works pretty consistently for networks like this but if you find any networks that have lines that cross over it doesn't work as consistently so just keep that in mind.